Hello and welcome to our discussion of the case study Cisco Systems Inc. Implementing ERP. This case provides students with an opportunity to learn about and discuss a significant changes taking place in corporate IT architectures. Organizations are transitioning away from standalone transaction systems, operating on mainframe computers and communicating via expensive private, loosely coupled, local area networks, LANs. The new architecture is a vastly more efficient, integrated, shared network operating over the Internet. The potential benefits are a dramatically reduced operational cost basis and new capabilities that lead to greater revenue opportunities. Enterprise Resource Planning ERP, continues to sweep across today's corporate landscape replacing cumbersome legacy systems. Implementation of an ERP system provides an opportunity for companies to replace major sets of legacy systems, for example, finance, manufacturing, supply, chain management, order processing and human resources, with a suite of tightly integrated systems supported by an outside vendor. ERP operates with a standard, common database, and generally with event-driven, real-time architectures. ERP software is often described as a way of doing business rather than just a software system. Business rules are incorporated into the basic architecture of the software providing bounded flexibility with respect to changes. Pete Solvik came to Cisco in 1993 as the new CIO. Upon arriving he was faced with manufacturing systems that were unstable and needed replacement. He initially hoped to replace the suite of legacy systems at a slower, more deliberate rate. However, the instability of the company's systems were an obstacle to sustaining the rapid growth of the company. Thus, Pete and his fellow managers aggressively attacked the problem with an ERP approach, which is described in the case. Following are the teaching objectives of this case study. To help the students understand what ERP is. To help the students understand the process of implementing ERP. To illustrate the role of ERP in the overall IT architecture and infrastructure of companies operating in the network era. To introduce the nature of IT leadership in the network era, and the idea of the Renaissance CIO. Before starting the analysis of the case, we first need to understand the extent to which ERP will play a role in the architecture of information age companies. Enterprise Resource Planning ERP, refers to a type of software that organizations use to manage day-to-day -day business activities such as Accounting Procurement Project Management Risk Management Compliance and supply chain operations. A complete ERP suite also includes enterprise performance management, software that helps plan, budget, predict, and report on an organization's financial results. ERP systems tie together a multitude of business processes and enable the flow of data between them. By collecting an organization's shared transactional data from multiple sources, ERP systems eliminate data duplication and provide data integrity with a single source of truth. Today, ERP systems are critical for managing thousands of businesses of all sizes and in all industries. To these companies, ERP is as indispensable as the electricity that keeps the lights on. It is apparent from the case that the Cisco ERP implementation was remarkably successful. To understand how successful the implementation was, why it was successful, and whether the success could be replicated, at Cisco or at another company we first need to list the factors of success. We also need to see whether these factors are replicable. So, let me ask the question. What were the factors that made a difference between success and failure during the project? Now here is an assignment for you. The table below lists various factors that can make an ERP implementation project success. You need to look at each factor and then note down the page number of case study where this factors was mentioned. If a factor was not mentioned in the case study, write down not mentioned in the case. After the discussion of success factors, it is important to identify sources of difficulty and how those sources might have been prevented or overcome more successfully. 
We shall also identify what factors led to successful resolution to problems. Some problems and factors in this case were as follows. Poor testing strategy. During testing before system cutover, transactions from individual departments were submitted to the system sequentially rather than simultaneously. When the system went live, all departments submitted transactions simultaneously. The strain on the system was too great. Consequently, the team had to apply brute force effort to fix problems after cutover. Operational performance suffered. What was required that testing team should have subjected the system to load conditions that were as realistic as possible. In this case, two factors led to led to quick resolution of this problem. Strong executive and vendor commitment. The fact that the company literally could not go back to the old systems, immature software. The software did not provide all the of the functionality that was required by Cisco off the shelf. As a result, Cisco was unable to realize its objective of making no changes to the ERP code. This shift in modification strategy to adapt the software added complexity to the project. Cisco had to select and implement a different service management package. This difficulty was managed successfully by employing a highly effective software change process, using a technically excellent staff, both internal and contract, undersized technical architecture. The sizing of the hardware proved to be incorrect. Much more hardware was required to process actual transaction volume. Cisco got lucky here in that they were able to hold the hardware vendor responsible for solving the problem. Solvik was resourceful in asking for a capability-based contract. The hardware vendor had a strong interest in leveraging Cisco's success into references and more business. That was the only reason that Cisco was able to solve the hardware requirement issue. Otherwise it could have been a costly mess. This was arguably the biggest lucky break in the entire project. However, the chances that a company could get a contract like this in the future are quite low. At the time that this case was written, ERP projects were famous for costing hundreds of millions of dollars to implement and taking many years to install. In this context, Cisco's $15 million and 9 months looks positively remarkable. But did Cisco really did this project in $15 million? Well, the original $15 million included only costs for the estimated 20 Cisco people that made up the core team. Other personnel were pulled into the project, approximately 100 total, but their costs do not appear to be factored into the total project cost. The cost of this additional manpower was $10.24 million. I would like you to go through the case and find out how the cost of additional manpower was $10.24 million. Further note that toward the end of the summer, the IT department postponed all their projects and focused entirely on the ERP project. In the case, Solvik says IT did nothing else that year. These costs were not included into the original $15 million. The cost of postponing all IT projects and dedicating 80% of IT staff for ERP project was $5.76 million. Your assignment here is to calculate how this cost of $5.67 million was calculated. Finally, note that the hardware vendor was required to take responsibility for undersizing of the technical architecture. Solvik and others estimate that they had to add 100% to capacity. Assuming that undersized architecture affected 50% of overall hardware expenditure, it was estimated that undersized ERP architecture costed additional $2,400,000 hardware costs. However, due to the unique hardware contract, Cisco did not pay this cost, therefore, it is possible to argue that Cisco's implementation actually ran over budget by a total of $18.4 million. That is an overrun of 122%. How many companies would consider this a success? Also consider the size of the investment relative to firm size at time decision was made. The investment made was $15 million. 
The Cisco's revenue at that time was $500 million. Cisco wanted to grow and become $5 billion plus company. If you scale this ERP project up to a company that would like to become a $5 billion plus company it equates to a $150 million project. This point is reinforced by Cisco's observation that the ERP implementation was a huge project for the company, the biggest ever at the time. So, was the project a success? Was it completed on schedule? Was it completed on cost? Was it completed on scope? Most probably, Cisco could do it again. This is because had many natural advantages. However, there were many important factors responsible for project's success. Cisco's commitment to get the best people. Cisco's commitment to install a project. Executive management structure that would not take no for an answer, following are some assignment questions. After an in-depth analysis of the case, you should be able to answer all these questions now. 1. What factors had made the difference between success and failure of the Cisco ERP project? 2. Where had the ERP team been smart? 3. Where had the ERP team been just plain lucky? 4. Do you think that the Cisco team could do such a project again if they had to? Why? Why not? 5. How important is the ERP to the overall architecture? Do you see the ERP component as something that will be undertaken by some, most or all companies as they build their information age IT architectures?